Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full length car reviews each and every week. And halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions Coffee and Cars. Mm -hmm. We've spun it off and we're up to number 75. It's not a round number, but it's a monumental number, Andrea. Sure. Three quarters of the way to 100. Yeah. All right, how do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. I recently purchased a 2024 Kia Seltos SX and I love it. I traded in my Subaru Crosstrek that I had for a short period of time. I financed the Kia and plan on keeping it for long term. So here's my question. How important is it to use premium gas? The owner's manual recommends an octane of 91 or higher to prevent engine knocking. The dealership told me the same thing. There are people who use regular gas apparently with no issues. Okay, so we should just let you know, for if you're not aware, Seltos is sold with a regular uh, non-turbocharged engine. That's right. And a 1.6 liter turbo. So the turbo, they're saying they want uh, premium gas, which I find surprising. Like if you drive any of the other ones, they don't need no. um, premium gas for the turbo. So I'm surprised that their entry level car um, you could always cheat and do a mid-grade if you wanted. Well, I actually reached out to Kia, yeah. the PR team, and uh, they wrote back right away. And they said, the owner's manual states, your new vehicle is designed to use only unleaded fuel, having a pump octane number of 87 or higher. So why, why All did they... of our Kia vehicles yeah. recommend 87 or higher if the owner chooses. So where did they get the 91 from? So the owner's manual in brackets, it says research octane number 91. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you have to put 91 in and the dealership shouldn't have told you that either. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking. It's because every Hyundai and Kia vehicle that I've driven, even if it's turbocharged, still uses regular gas. Yeah. If you look on um, the the fill, it says 87 and in brackets, it has a higher number. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't have to put that in. So just put regular gas in it. Don't worry about it. Don't waste your money. You're fine with regular fuel. As 87. Soon as, as soon as you read it to me, I'm like, that kit doesn't no. seem right. So because you had mentioned that the, the dealership told you that as well, I wanted to check with head office for you. Oh, wait. They said. And, Andrea, a dealership giving misinformation? I know. That's never happened. Not good. So regular fuel for you. Uh, you'll and be fine. On. Love the show and appreciate the knowledge you share. Thank you. Has Mazda announced any upcoming events when you suspect they might unveil the new generation of the CX-5? Eagerly awaiting this reveal. Wait a second, Andrea. We're going to drive it next week. <laughs> CX-5, not CX-70. Oh, MX-5. Oh, I got MX-5 yeah. on the brain. We do have CX-70 coming up and we have the new MX5. Or refreshed MX-5 Okay, CX-5. Yes. Oh yeah, the SUV. I had MX-5 on the brain. The CX, the MX, and then the XCs from Volvo, they I mess know. me up. Yeah. Uh, so yes, we are going to be driving the updated Miata uh, in about a week. Yeah. Uh, we are going to California in May to drive the CX-70, but nothing about the 5. Nothing about the 5. And we've asked Mazda and they just don't speak of future uh, models so they wouldn't tell us anyway of course rumors are just going off well, it's gonna... online <clears throat> so something's got to come all you have to do is look at the rest of the industry and you'll know yeah so 2025 uh, slash 26 is a big year for the largest category of vehicles sold which is compact SUVs. There's going to be a new RAV4 25 or 26. Uh, they just showed the 2025 updated Tucson. There's going to be an updated Sportage. Um, so we're going to see a whole bunch of vehicles. Uh, we just um, saw the, the new Forester, the 2025 coming, Forester. Yeah. So CX-5 will fall in line with that, either a 25 or 26 model. For sure. Does USB-A versus C in cars make a difference in charging speeds? It's actually a good question because a lot of people think, yes, it does make a difference. It's data transfer mostly, that's right? That's it. And that's the problem is that in, a, so we all know that USB-C 
will charge faster. It has higher charging speeds, and we also know that it can charge larger devices. So what it comes down to a vehicle is that you're limited to, to the power and the connection in that vehicle. Now, some people say that USB-Cs for ease of use, they prefer it. It's just easier to plug into, but you're not actually going to be able to charge it any faster than a USB-A. So also on cars, you'll see um, plugs that have uh, like a charge saying it's going to give you power and mm -hmm. other ones that are for data. So that's where you plug in. You would plug the data one in to get your Apple and Android to work on the head unit. And other ones, it's just charging. So a lot of the ports that are in the car are not connected to the radio. No. Nope. They're just charge only. Yeah. And there's only certain ones that are data connected to give you the information onto your screen. So, um, the problem is you get in you you've got a cable which is an a and you get in a car and it needs a c and vice versa that's the frustrating part but yeah. when it's your car every day you just leave the cable in there for sure now some apple devices actually don't have a USB A port anymore apple's moved away from that and when i read that online i thought well why would they do that and the, apparently it's um, the european commission that's exactly it yeah so and that, by 2024 this year it's going to be strictly USB-C. So Apple was forced to follow Android, superior product, just saying, <laughs> um, to, uh, to go to uh, USB-C. Uh, they, they had their own proprietary cables and yeah. plugs, and we know that because we have a ton of Apple uh, laptops in the house, and not one of them has the same plug. <laughs> no. They all have a different plug, which is so stupid. So that was a bunch of um, waste. Yeah. And the European Commission said, why do we have to have all these different cables for all our different devices? One cable for everything, and you and you can use it over and over. I think eventually everything is going to be USB-C, but you notice in a lot of vehicles that, okay, standard USB-A you get, and then if you get another trim, it may include USB-C. Usually USB-C isn't standard on, on some of these models. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think we're gonna move towards that in the end. Love your show. Thank you. What is the difference between a mild hybrid CX-90 in brackets and a full hybrid Toyota? Also, does the price premium of Grand Highlander over a Mazda CX-90 really make sense? So let's just break it down. Mild hybrid versus a true hybrid. It's interesting. The luxury brands have been using a mild hybrid system for quite some time, a 48 volt mild hybrid system. We have never been asked this much about what are the differences between the two until that CX-90 came out so, you with know, an inline six and a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So Volvo years ago put out a press release saying all of their vehicles are going to be um, electrified by a certain date. Yeah. It was a bit of a nonsense press release. All it meant was all of their vehicles were going to have as a baseline a mild hybrid system. Yeah. So this 48 volt um, uh, system is being developed and utilized by car companies for different things. Some put it towards fuel efficiency, other words, other people People put it towards um, uh, gadgets in the car, like mm -hmm. suspension, calibration, those sorts of things. Performance too. Um, performance, but um, it doesn't really improve the fuel economy that much. Nothing like a Toyota or a Lexus hybrid. Never. So a mild hybrid has a small battery compared to a hybrid vehicle. And it's and, oh, just it, quickly, it, it discharges very quickly. That's it's it. only for short spurts. That's it. So you do get better fuel economy. Like if, if the CX-90 didn't have a mild hybrid system, research shows that it's about 20% better, a mild hybrid compared to a gas model, but nothing like a pure hybrid because a pure hybrid has an electric motor. It has a larger battery and at very, very low speeds, like in a parking lot, you can actually drive that hybrid in pure electric mode. So the pure or the true hybrid, like a Toyota RAV4 hybrid, is going to get you much better fuel economy than something like a CX-70 inline six with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, but it's better than nothing. I remember we went to the launch of the Ram and they had their um, e-assist torque system. I'm trying to remember the name of it off the mm. top of my head. It'll come to me as soon as I'm talking about it, done talking about it. But what they said, um, um, how long does the 48 volt uh, torque assist last for? And the chief engineer says, oh, about a uh, quarter of a second. I know. And it was just the, it was just to get the vehicle to move and then the, then it was done. That's what Mercedes Benz is using it and it's like it, you just get it it's quick. Quick. Mm. Um the other thing is is you can um charge that 48 volt system 
with regen breaking. That's how it's all working. Thanks for being so responsive and engaging. You two are super knowledgeable and gracious about helping viewers. You're so welcome. I'm in the market for a three row SUV and the Atlas is on the top of my list. Have you heard anything about a 2025 Palisade or Telluride? I loved them, but the lack of wireless CarPlay in 2024 was a deal breaker. Well, they're going to obviously have the wireless because yeah. we've been looking at a bunch of new products. We just were at the New York Auto Show with Hyundai and all their new vehicles have the new infotainment system and supports wireless Apple and Android. So that's a yeah. big deal. A Palisade, there's lots of uh, renders and what people think it's going to look like. Yeah. So those two vehicles, the Telluride and the Palisade, will be redone, but I'm not sure of the timeline on it. Well, Hyundai did come out and say that the palisade you will be very surprised by the new one it's mm -hmm. not going to look like the palisade just like the santa fe doesn't look like the old santa fe but they didn't say the palisade's going to look like the santa fe they just said it's going to look very different than the current palisade for sure wireless apple carplay and android auto is coming we already see it in the refresh sonata that we have this week i paired my phone on that system like that. Was it, was it like that? Was it oh, as fast as a 48 volt like, system? It was like this. It was excellent. I just remembered what it was and, called. And I go to no, say. No, no, no. I just, before I forget, e torque. That's yeah, what it was e called. E torque. E -torque. I remember That's that. That's what it yeah. was called. Um, I have to say when I got in that Sonata, I cannot tell you how excited I was to go in and pair it wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I did Android Auto. It's fantastic. So it's coming. It's coming. So just. Pump the brakes. You have to wait a little longer. <laughs> now, you could get a dongle, but I understand what you mean. You could get a dongle, plug it in, and you're going to have your wireless. Watch. But I get it how you don't want a dongle. I didn't want a dongle either. I wanted it to come. There's so many jokes running through my head Android Android right now. I know. I, so many things I could say, Andrea. He's but just let's like just... twisting out All over right. there. Well, right, let's hun? keep moving on. Uh, what is your opinion of VW's reliability? My wife purchased the Atlas in 2023 and we're planning how long we should keep this vehicle. 2023? It's a year old. So, it's new. It's new. Um, Listen, you've got a four-year warranty on the Atlas, so you could definitely ride it out while it's under warranty. And if you want, you could get the extended warranty and continue it for another couple of years. You know what I say? Enjoy the vehicle. It's only a year old. Yeah. Uh, up until that point, if you're really worried about it, then flip out of it at the end of the warranty. Or, or you could get an extended warranty on it. Yeah. You know, you've got four years. Three more. Uh, yeah, three more. Keep it and uh, see how it goes. If it's been good to you. Why not? So this is what I hear from people who own the Atlas. Some say it's great. It's wonderful. I love it. Best vehicle ever. I wonder what other people say, Andrea. Others not so much. <laughs> so I don't know why there's such a great mix. Consumer Reports gives the 2024 Atlas a predicted reliability score of 32 out of 100. Zoikers. Yikes. That's not good. Overall score better, 62 out of 100. JD Power gives it a score of 75 out of That's 100 low. for reliability. Mm -hmm. An overall score of 77 out of 100. So there are problems. It doesn't mean that you're going to have problems because some people say it's amazing. So type below if you own an Atlas and let us know how it's going for you. We'd love to hear from you. Looking for a used 2021 Durango RT with oh, the V8 Zach. Nice. What are other options that have decent towing capacity? Don't need the biggest third row either. Love watching your show every week. Okay, Durango, so, I just want to say, can tow 8,700 yeah, yeah. pounds. Yeah, it's got the best tow rating in the game for midsize uh, SUV. Um, you could go for the, the V6, which is, uh, oh, I think, 1,000 pounds less. It still mm. has great towing capacity. Um, so that is one of the strong points of that vehicle. And the reason why, Andrea, mm. I was going to say, if you look at the German midsize SUVs, yeah they all tow around 7,700 pounds. That's right. And they typically have, like this Cayenne is 7,700 pounds. Mm -hmm. You could get a BMW X5, it's gonna be around 7,700 pounds. Then you could get a Mercedes-Benz GLE, which is 7,700 pounds. Do you know what the Durango is based on? It's based on the old GLE platform. Yep. You might not remember, but Mercedes <laughs> and Chrysler they used to be married. Yeah. It wasn't a good marriage. They broke up like many marriages, not ours, like many marriages do. But one of the, one of the offspring mm -hmm. 
went to Chrysler, and that was the GLE platform. It went on to make um, the Grand Cherokee, which is great, yep. and the Durango, and the Durango can tow because it's based on a German platform. Now, that Durango, as I mentioned, 8,700 pounds. I don't know if that's what you need. Is that kind of your... Like 7,700, is that too little? So I pulled some numbers. That's a big number, by the way. That is, 8,700 is huge. Most midsize SUVs are 5,000 pounds. Yeah. So even with the V6 at 7,700, you've got way more. And if you get the, uh, the V8, you add another 1,000 pound towing capacity. So Toyota Sequoia, 9,000 pounds. That's a big one. Nissan Armada, 8,500 pounds. Chevrolet Tahoe, 8,400 pounds. The Yukon, 8,400 pounds. And I don't know if you're... If you're looking at luxury, the GX is 9,000 pounds. You've got the Escalade, 6.2 liter, 8,200 pounds. And then that Jeep Grand Cherokee V6, 6,200 pounds. Yeah, so, but that's the, new, that's the new Grand Cherokee, which is not on the same platform as the Durango right. is. And no offering of a and, V8 anymore. And the other thing is almost all of those ones you mentioned are body-on-frame trucks. Yeah. Okay, so they need a lot more gas when you're not towing. So I say... Durango all day, baby. I love me my Durango. Yeah, Zach loves the and Durango. Actually the, I like the Durango and, too. And the thing is, the video we're showing of, the, of it going by, mm -hmm. I think it's a 2021 V8. That was, and they don't make that anymore. You can't no. get the V8 any longer. No. So uh, that's a good one. You two are great to watch. Thank you. With the vast majority of automakers using turbos in their engines, is turbo lag a thing of the past? I had a 2007 Passat with the two liter turbo and since then had various cars strictly naturally aspirated. Currently own the IS350 mm. F Sport 2023 model. Mm, good good pick. Mm -hmm. um, so what they have is they have a, um, a variable scroll turbos now, or they have uh, the geometry of the turbo is so that you, uh, the, okay, so the way turbos work is the exhaust that comes out of the engine spins the turbo on one side and pushes the air into the cylinder on the incoming side. Yeah. So in, inlet valves and exhaust valves working together to give more power. So the new geometry of the turbos allows for even a small amount of pressure to spool the turbo up. Mm -hmm. Even some turbos now have electric assist. So they're not just running off the exhaust gas. They're, all, they're also using electronics to do that. I do still feel like there is some turbo lag out there in some of the vehicles uh, that we drive. Not much. But not, not much. as bad. But it, it used to be really still, bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, but better. Better. Anyway, that's it for you us. You know what you do if you don't want turbo lag? Mm. Get a 5.7 liter V8 Durango. Ooh, that'll be just fine <laughs> just, for you. But just not with e-torque. It was e-torque. I knew that's what it was. So now you've got it in your head. I e feel so much better. It's good when you get it when we're doing the, the filming still, right? Can we go back to the dongle? Oh, the no. dongle. The good old dongle. <laughs> Let's move on. What a name, hey? Who came dongle. up with that? Who wants a dongle these days? Not me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> anyway, that's it for us. Uh, if you want to get a question in, follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out asking for questions. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.